Hey everybody, welcome back to Sophisticates Cakes by Mary. And if you're new here, welcome for the first time. For this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this super simple three ingredient linear sugar sales from scratch cake. And I'm also showing you how I do my favorite marbled buttercream technique. So if this sounds interesting to you, please stick around and we'll get right to it after the intro. Now for making these sugar sales, I just went around my house and found things that I already had. Um, you don't have to use these exact tools. The only thing that you actually do need is a silicone mat. You definitely need that. So for making the sales, I used confectioner sugar, corn syrup, clear corn syrup, water, and I used my instant read thermometer and a glass measuring, bowl, measuring cup. So first things we're gonna do is we're gonna combine the sugar and the corn syrup and the water all together in the pan. Just mix them together without mixing them too much. You don't wanna create any more bubbles than necessary. So I'm just kind of, it looks like I'm stirring a lot, but I'm just kind of pushing it around to make sure it doesn't burn on the bottom. Now you just let it come to a boil, a simmer, and you need to leave it until it reaches 300, 300 degrees. You can use your instant read thermometer or do it this way. This is the hard boil or hard ball test. Take a little bit of it, put it in some water, cold water, and if it firms up right away, becomes solid right away, and when you pick it up and drop it in your container of water and it makes a little ting sound, you know it's ready. So I went ahead and I transferred it to my measuring cup, my glass measuring cup, and I kind of let those bubbles subside a little bit. And then I'm just pouring them directly on my mat, which I have draped over. It's just a handrail. <laughs> you could use whatever you want. Um, just drape your silicone mat over the top of it. And you're gonna need to elevate it. And I use some, just some cake dummies that I have. You could use books, you could use whatever you want. And I wanted them to kind of flare out at the bottom a little bit. Um, so I didn't raise them up any higher. If you wanted them to just drip completely straight down, you just wouldn't raise them up a little higher. Now pour that on the top, let it cool down. And I had cut off the tips of the drips that went down too far. You can do that while it's still not completely firmed up. But be careful, I should be wearing gloves, I know it, because isomalt, well in this case, I guess it's not isomalt, because I think isomalt is an actual, actual brand, it's the sugar, um, is very, very hot. But I've done it a few times, quite a few times, so I just know to keep my hands out of it and to be careful. So leave those aside to cool, and then move on to getting your cake ready. Now I just had a already pre-crumb coated um, six inch cake, I believe there's five layers of cake on this, and I'm just putting a layer of buttercream to um, act as an anchor for the marble technique. You don't have to do a real thick layer of buttercream, you just want to make sure that it's clean. And I'm using some um, acetate sheets, that's what those are called, <laughs> to do the marbling technique that I like to do. And I'm just using a toothpick dipped in I believe it was burgundy color because I wanted it to kind of have the burgundy um, veins in the but buttercream. And to get a more intense depth of color, I like to do it this way on the mat before I put the buttercream on. That way it's just, you see that they're more prominent once you have it all on there. And to get the marble technique, I like to use the colors that I want to use, which was a white and a pale gray and a pale pink mixed with that burgundy. I just add a little bit of each color into a bowl. You kind of, um, you don't mix them together so much, you fold them together a little bit because you don't want the colors to be incorporated into each other. Then you just take a dab with your spatula and gingerly put it, I guess, on the mat or on the um, acetate sheet. You don't want to move it around too much because it's, gonna blend into each other too much again. You A little blending is okay, you just don't want it over blended. You won't see the difference in the colors. The marbling will kind of disappear. And just cover your entire surface this way. And add more colors together as you need to. This is one of those processes that you figure it out as you're going. 
and take a peek every once in a while on the other side of your acetate sheet because that's gonna be the side that is gonna be on the outside of the cake. That's what you're gonna see. This is the side that's gonna be attached to the cake, so it doesn't need to be pretty. It's what's on the other side that is what needs to be pretty. Now I'm just kind of smoothing it out a little bit so that it doesn't have any real, real thick, heavy points in the buttercream. Just get it kind of the same thickness throughout and remove the excess if necessary. Now you don't need to let it firm up at all. See there you can see the pretty marbling. It was just kind of a little sneak peek there. Um, don't need to let it set up. Take your cake that is from your refrigerator or your freezer. You want it firmed up first. 10 minutes in the freezer or 20 minutes in the refrigerator is best. I add, sprayed a little water, removed the excess. You don't want it soaking wet. You just want it to be a little damp so that your buttercream will stick. Now just, this is when it's just kinda, you know what, to the wall there. You just, you pick it up and wrap it around. Don't hesitate, don't overthink it, wrap it around. And then you can take your smoother and smooth it down once you get it stuck on. I mean, if you need to push that buttercream underneath around a little bit, that's okay because it's actually the buttercream that you're pushing around is what is on the underneath side of it. And just lay your free end of your acetate sheet kind of over the top of the side, the edge that you first laid down. Now I had already measured the distance around my cake and I allowed for another inch or two on that acetate sheet. Um, for placement, for ease of moving it onto the cake. Now, go ahead and put that in your freezer for 10 to 20 minutes and let that firm up. And in the meantime, we can remove our sails, our sugar sails, from the silicone. They should be firmed up by now. Now, these drips are very fragile. So just take your time. This is even sped up. Take your time and remove little parts at a time and when you pick it up like this don't put any pressure on that bottom hand you're just holding it still and if a few of these drips break off it's okay and on this one it had already released on the bottom so all I did was I took a um, that's a tool that you use on sugar cookies um, or you could use a toothpick and just kind of loosen it up from the mat anywhere that it's not already loosened up I didn't actually have to pick up this mat at all. If this is your first time doing this, I would suggest only doing one of the sails per mat because you can't pick it up and remove the first one when the other one is still attached. Now just be super gentle. Isn't that pretty? Now here they are, all ready to go. And I did do a few, you know, a little bit extra. A little extra is something to play with. You know, if something breaks, you have more. Now, once this is firmed up, go ahead and just peel that acetate sheet off. There will be some residue left on it and that's okay. And for me, I see right there, I am actually removing the excess where the two pieces met just with a straight edge tool. Now, if you're gonna have a little pitting in there and that's okay for the look I was going for, I didn't mind that, but you could go back in while it's still cold and fill in those holes with a little buttercream if you need to. I just use a little buttercream on the bottom part of these to get them to stick. Just a little buttercream. Now these linear shaped sails would look really good I think on a rectangular shaped cake or a square shaped cake, but that's not what I had on hand for this one. Um, but I think it would look really good with that also. And I just went ahead and added some silk flowers you could add fresh, I didn't have any, but you could add fresh, you could even add sugar flowers if that's something you enjoy doing also. And some meringues and some fresh raspberries. I thought the raspberries brought the color of the burgundy out a little bit. Now you could do this with any color combination that you want, this doesn't have to be the only option. Um, on some of the sales I had added a, a, you know, like half a tiny little drop of pink so I got some of that pale pink in there also. You add that color after you remove it from the heat and swirl it around a little bit. That's when I like to add the color. So there it is, guys. This is my linear sugar sale cake with 
my favorite buttercream marbling technique, some flowers and meringues, and some fresh raspberries. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I had a good time making this one. I really love this, this design. So if you did like it, please like, subscribe, and share, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload. And we'll catch you the next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.